right. One thing that I learned uh, many years ago is I used to auto follow all of my acts. So if I finish one sequence at the last cue in that sequence, it would auto follow to the next uh, group or cue or whatever it was. This was a massive mistake and it bit me in the butt so bad in Sarasota, Florida. Um, I was doing a show and basically the lighting cue um, in the end of the group was the last lighting cue was the cue that I used to create the auto follow to go into the next act. Um, it was one of the acts that I was not on stage. I was running back full speed to change costumes while the, while the next act was on, one of, the, one of the performers that we hired in our show. And uh, after about four or five shows, I realized that it was going into a blackout. And then in uh, half a second later, the lights were having to change drastically to go into this next routine. And I realized, why am I having a blackout there? There's no reason to have a blackout. It can go from that cue and fade right into the next act. So right between shows, I went up to the house. There's another reason. I had the computer in the front of the house, uh, which some of you may use. I don't do that anymore. Computers stay backstage with us. But I actually went over and removed and deleted that lighting cue. <laughs> But that lighting cue had the auto follow built into it. So what had happened is I had done the show, I had done the act, I ran backstage, started taking off my clothes, and the second act never started. And sadly enough, I had some phenomenal techs with me that were running the show. At that time, uh, the show was not run all by myself. It was run by all of my crew. And the crew was phenomenal at their job, but nobody knew how I had programmed the show. So there was no way for them to find where in the queue list the show was running, what had went wrong. They didn't, you know. So I had to actually run through the back of the house with a shirt wide open in the dark uh, and physically get up to the booth and manually start the rest of the show, which only was probably 40 seconds, but gosh, did it feel like 10 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to stop that problem right now. Uh, a lot of you are gonna do this. You're gonna go here and do an auto follow uh, at the end of that queue like that. Do not do that. We're gonna use start queues. I use start queues for everything, and this will solve this problem. We're gonna drag a start queue right in here and we don't need to go to the timeline because you can see that the end of that queue happens at almost 10 seconds. So we can go in here and put on here um, 10 seconds. Uh, but if you do go to the timeline, of course, you can very easily see that the stop queue, which is untitled at the moment, is just coming right after that one. So we're going to go here and we're going to grab the logo group and drag the logo group on top of the start queue, which means when this finishes, it's going to fire the logo group okay now to make this look nice we're gonna do a fade cue like we did before so we're gonna bring this down to zero opacity we're going to um, bring the fade cue in and we're gonna drag it on top and bring the opacity to 100% which it now is and we're gonna make that a loop which I think I did already. Yep, in, in, infinite loop. And we have some music in here as well at a low volume. So now if we go ahead and fire that cue, watch what happens as it counts down. Right here you can see the start cue is counting down. Four, three, two, one. Video stops. It started the next group cue automatically. And now the music comes in as a background and the logo is coming to life and it just follows perfectly. Now here's the cool thing. When you stop this and you want to change the show, um, you don't want to do that logo there today, you want to play a video. You can simply go over here and grab the new routine. In this case it's that and we're going to drag it on top of the start logo. And we don't have to worry about the order. It's not going to be in sequence. It can be out of sequence. Uh, in fact, if you have a logo in your show, every time you want the logo to start, you don't need to have multiple copies of that logo. The start cue can just say start cue number four over and over and over again, where there's only one logo through the whole show, but you may be using it 25 times. That's another thing to keep in mind as well. Um, and now you're going to go and hit um, start again and watch what happens. And this time it started the American flag. 
uh, or whatever act you wanted to start. So I constantly do this because this is phenomenal when you create a new workspace. And this is a new version of your show. You can go in here and you can Command C to copy that entire act. You can come here and Command V to paste it. Now you will need to tell it what it's doing. Um, but if you add anything else in that group, like a curtain cue, you can drag that to there. And when that one finishes, the exact same thing is going to happen. It will then fire that curtain cue, which works perfectly. And it doesn't matter what act or what show you're producing, you can have it auto follow automatically with just dragging the other cue on top of it. It really makes programming easy. And by groups combining with start cues, you're going to have full control of everything. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly how to how to operate the show using start cues later. Uh, but my start cues also run my entire show, whether I'm using a wireless remote or I give the uh, the wireless uh, app, or the iPad controller, um, the QLab remote controller to somebody, or they're physically using a keyboard or, um, or a computer backstage. I use start cues. They never have control over my actual cue list. We're using start cues for that only. Uh, so start cues are very, very powerful, and they can be used all over the place. So I hope you start using them in your programming.